Kyle Larson absolutely dominates was at the same tire as the spring, plus four drivers will not be advancing on in the playoffs. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Sometimes you see dominating performances, but not quite like what we saw out of Kyle Larson on Saturday night in the Bristol night race, where he led 462 of 500 laps. Combined with his Hendrick Motorsports teammate, Alex Bowman, they led 496 of the 500 laps, an absolutely evisceration of the rest of the field by Kyle Larson. It wasn't even close all night. He His margin of victory, just over seven seconds, the biggest margin of victory at Bristol since 1994. For his average running position was 1.1. Like I said, he led 462 laps. It was never even close. And when he took the lead from Alex Bowman early on in the race, you're like, okay, like Kyle Larson took the lead. And then he started to hack his way through the field like Lizzie Borden, and it just wasn't close the rest of the night. I mean, even on restarts, you're like, okay, maybe somebody get alongside him. Nope, he got, went ahead and sailed off and won the race. Dominating performance dominating performance. I mean, the most uh, laps ever led in a Bristol night race, Kyle Larson. Uh, Cale Yarbrough led all 500 laps in the Bristol spring race one time, so not quite that impressive for Kyle Larson, but 462 laps is certainly uh, what people refer to as an ass kicking, and that's what happened on Saturday night for Kyle Larson. He now advances on to the playoffs. Obviously, the points reset when we get to Kansas next week. He goes from not being the points leader to, once again, being the points leader uh, with a substantial lead over uh, the cutoff line, which is great for him. Alex Bowman advanced on to the next round as well uh, before the race ended. He now gets relegated back down into the cut zone because he doesn't have those playoff points to carry him through. That's why getting playoff points in the regular season are so crucial and so important. Obviously, if you pick them up in the playoffs too, they're also as important. But playoff points in the regular season can help carry you through the uh, first and probably second round, help you get all the way to the round of eight if you have enough of them. And Kyle Larson right now has enough of them. When people wonder was this a good race uh and when you vote in the jeff gluck poll i'm not sure what people are going to vote for but honestly i would probably give this race a 62 now on tiktok i misspoke and gave it a 77 that's not what i meant to say uh but it was late i was tired it ended up with a 77 probably should have said 67 there it's probably what my brain was going for uh, having slept on it, having rewatched some things, 62 is where I'm putting this race at. If you remember back to the spring race, the big attack there was about the tires. It created a banger of a race. You had tires that wouldn't last 40 laps. Guys were going absolutely crazy, recording tires in like 20 miles on, on the track. Now, NASCAR and Goodyear said they brought the same tire back for the fall, and it had no wear. Yeah, it had some fall off to it, but they basically could run 200 laps on these tires and they were still perfectly fine. The Fred Flintstone specials are back once again. Goodyear brought a hard tire. Now they say that they brought the same tire. I don't have any tinfoil to put my tinfoil hat on right now. The conspiracy theorists were out in full force on social media during the race. And Denny Hamlin kind of alluded to this leading up to the race that he thinks something happened with the formula back in the spring and then it was changed this time around. Maybe he's not wrong in this situation because what we saw on Saturday night was nowhere near what we saw on uh, uh, back in the spring. You're telling me back in the spring we couldn't do 40 laps. Now we bring the same tire back and we can go over 200 laps. They say that they recreated the same issue when it was 90 degrees out back in the summer during a tire test. Then we come back you know, in the fall now and we don't have tires that wear. Very perplexing. Very much a bummer because it was really hard to pass on Saturday night. The Gen 7 car, we know it's hard to pass. And I would argue that Bristol over the last decade, honestly, with the Gen 6 car, especially in the night race, created banger of races. They were phenomenal. I know there's a lot of fans out there that are like, those races stunk. I only want single file on the bottom, bump and run Bristol. Listen, multi-lane Bristol is far superior to that controversial opinion. I know people aren't going to like that, but it is. It just is. It created so there's some great moments, great passing, great racing, which is what we tune in for. I don't tune in to watch a conveyor belt of single file cars go around. On the bottom, I tune in to watch actual racing and for them to be able to use the track. And that's what happens with the multi-lane Bristol. Now, Bristol is two lanes, uh, a top lane and a bottom lane. Middle, not so much. And the two lanes are pretty equal. Obviously, NASCAR laid down PJ1 a few hours before the race on Saturday, much to the surprise of a lot of crew chiefs. And it created pretty equal lanes, if we're being honest. And it made passing really difficult. I mean, Kyle Larson was putting Daniel Suarez four laps down uh, what felt like forever at times. I mean, when he put him his third lap down, 
it probably took a 10 laps a dozen laps it felt like uh his fourth time he put him a lap down that one was actually pretty easy he probably felt like he was passing the 99 car all night Daniel Suarez did not have a very good night Brad Keselowski did not have a very good night either it felt like he was out there in a Rick Ware racing car because he was just out to lunch the entire time apparently he and his crew chief Matt McCall set that car up for a high wear tire race guess what didn't wear nowhere whatsoever just out there running around on some pristine Goodyear Eagles which is fine but man it felt like we were making such good progress in terms of tires and then we just don't get those tires anymore huge bummer uh in that situation but for a lot of playoff guys an absolutely abysmal night Martin Truex Jr his the difference in him advancing on to the playoffs and not advancing on into the playoffs is 0 0.09 mile per hour that's what his speeding penalty got him that's what relegated him back in the field and he could just not pass any cars after that the guy that was running second basically all night second or third all night gets relegated back into the field cannot make any passes that is a problem right there uh, even Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs was able to, he had a fast car, able to come from the back after getting a speeding penalty, just couldn't get his way all the way back up to where he was. He also does not advance on into the playoffs. He was eliminated along with Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex Jr., and Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton had a power steering pump failure, uh, just unfortunate uh, night for him. Obviously, he was kind of in a must-win position. Brad Keselowski, from the drop of the flag, was just never in contention either. Bad night for them. Daniel Suarez survives and advances. Chase Briscoe survives and advances. Today's video is sponsored by Lockdown Brand. Head over to LockdownBrand.com today for your motorsports-inspired apparel. Their shirts are absolutely phenomenal. Their hats equally as great. Use code BREAKHARD10 at checkout to save 10%. Also, do not forget that there is now a Break Hard blog as well. I'm posting about two to three times a week I will have my Monday morning cool down lap out on Monday morning so go ahead and sign up you have it delivered to your inbox by clicking the link that is down in the description below one thing you guys just will not believe is the fact that Corey LaJoy brought out not one but two cautions on Saturday night at Bristol the first caution actually I wouldn't really argue either of them were his fault he got into the back of the 22 car uh spun him out which that was kind of a checkup situation on corner exit and then he got loose which was his fault and then gets tagged by josh barry and turned into the wall there his night was over his career at spire motorsports also ended prematurely on saturday night when they retired his car after he sustained damage um in those wrecks the 66 car of josh blicky we need to talk about that for a second real quick because that MBM car, the meat wagon, the Arby's car was out on track and they were on track. I will give them that. But they appeared to be in their own class of a race. And by class, I mean, like the rest of the field was racing uh, hypercars or LMDHs, if we're talking sports car here. And they were racing a GTD car because they were just getting past like they were standing still like Ricky Bobby when he came back from his injury and tried to get out on track. They had no speed whatsoever and boy were they in the way a lot of the times i get mbm wanting to come and race in the cup series i understand that maybe bristol is not the place that you come to it's a short track with nowhere to get out of the way and man do they create a rolling chicane for the majority of the night the arby's car looked great though hey shout out to them shout out to their designers uh the meat wagon looking great out on track there's also going to be some talk about potential race manipulation in the 100 rule with tyler reddick and denny hamlin reddick giving up some spots to potentially help denny hamlin out for stage points i think that it's a lot being made about nothing honestly i don't think that there's much there uh, if there is anything i assume nascar will probably look into it the same way they looked into the haas situation a couple years ago at the roval um i know there's people on the internet talking about it. there's people very angry mainly because it probably stems from the denny hamlin hatred but for me there's not much there but i felt like we probably had to talk about it so people didn't uh come into the comments and be like you're just a toyota shill next week i'll be a ford shill chevy shill i'm nascar shill nascar pays me honestly when the check comes and hits my bank account every week then i put out a video promoting nascar i've seen the script you know all the things for the finish of the race so the top 10 actually had some interesting names in it. Yeah, kyle larson winning uh the race then you have chase elliott finishing second elliott had a lot of speed on saturday night just not the speed that kyle larson had bubble wallace uh signs a new contract and then picks up a podium finish in p3 denny hamlin p4 christopher bell comes home fifth uh ryan blaney six ryan priest you heard me correctly there ryan priest in that number 41 cart stewart haas racing a p7 finish probably getting himself prepared for that rfk ride next year being like look boys i got myself a top 10 and then you have alex bowman 
P9. Oh, sorry. Chase Briscoe, P8. Alex Bowman, P9. And then finishing out your top 10 is Ross Chastain uh, in 10th. Michael McDowell, P11. Good run for him. Uh, for Chastain to be uh, P10 and his teammate Daniel Suarez to be P31 on the day, four laps down is really bad. Daniel Suarez, though, survives and advances on to the next round of the playoffs. So we now head to Kansas next weekend with Kyle Larson as your points leader, plus 39 over the cut line. Christopher Bell in second at plus 24 over the cut line. Tyler Reddick plus 20. William Byron plus 14. Ryan Blaney plus 11. And then things get really tight from six on down. Denny Hamlin is only plus seven. Chase Elliott plus six. Joey Logano plus four. Austin Cendrick obviously minus four. Suarez minus six. Bowman and Chase Briscoe minus seven as they head to Kansas. Things are going to get really shaken up. You have Kansas, which is a uh, mile and a half, which has aged really Really well, multi lane has become one of NASCAR's best tracks, especially in the Gen 7 era. With cooler temperatures, it should put on a very good race next weekend. Let's hope so after what we saw on Saturday night. From there, they head to Talladega, which anything can happen at Talladega. And then to close out this round, they head to the Roval in Charlotte, which I think I'm going to attend. That is a very high likelihood of me attending there. So if you're going to be there, let me know if you're going to the Roval. Um, so for now, that is where we stand at. Kyle Larson eviscerated the field. Hendrick Motorsports absolutely dominated the Bristol night race. And now we're wondering, hey, is Kyle Larson once again the championship favorite? Is Tyler Reddick going to bounce back from this mediocre performance that he on on Saturday night? Who are your championship for? Let me know in the comments what you thought of the race everything that happened, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.